I've got the best of both worlds. I've got a subject to work from life, a bunch of flowers, and I'm working indoors in the studio. And I'm going to be taking an impression of the subject. Uh, rather than doing the vase and every single flower, I'm doing just a sort of fleeting impression of the bunch of flowers and all the colours. I've also utilised the fact that it's against a, a blue background and therefore my pale blue paper is ideal. And when I'm using a pale colour of paper, I usually sketch in making the marks just with a slightly darker or lighter uh, pastel. And as I say, I'm just using part of the composition so I'm making a few marks to say one of the main flowers will be here. There's a lovely big, oh, what are they called, Gerberas or something like that, in there. There's a lovely sort of deep pocket in there where the, the flower sits in. And then there's a little patch of white here. And they're in shadow because we've got lovely pinks over here as well. So they'll stretch out to here. The other feature to this one is that I'm going to dilute some of the pastel with water and get some wash effects. Remember pastel is made of basic pigment and therefore in some makes, in fact the better quality of the pastel, the higher percentage of pigment it has in it and therefore it should be able to dilute with water. And the best way to practice that kind of technique is trial and error. Just try diluting your own pastels with water and see if they work. That's quite a nice format. There's this sort of bunch effect here. There'll be the odd little bits of lilies popping up here and there. Right, that's enough sketching in, so I'll start to block in. I'm just blocking in a little bit of the, the pinks at the moment. This will be much deeper later, but I'm going to take this base colour, if you like, and just dilute it slightly with water. It's always a test period because if you've got a box like mine with uh, different pastels, different types of pastel, you'll find that some will be quite happy to be diluted and others will resist it slightly. But that's half the fun, just finding out. So that's going to be a fairly dark flower in here. I'll just block in with a stronger red at the moment. And then we'll have more of the, the purples and pinks over here. Again, a very light touch so that when I wet it, it will just dissolve into the background. I want to keep the whole thing fairly light to begin with. A light colour paper almost demands a, a light handling to begin with. And then once you've got the shapes into position, you can start to get stronger. So for instance, some of these greens are going to be pretty dark, but I'll just use a, a mid-tone dark at the moment to show that up. So that will be very dark in there later. But I'm just testing things out at the moment. I have white flowers here, but I'm using blue for them. And a little bit stronger greens. Right, this is where the fun begins, because you never quite know what reaction you're going to get to the water, but it's all the more exciting. The whole thing's just an impression at the moment. I'll start with the, the pinks, and you'll see, oh, lovely, how quite strong that colour comes out already. In fact, I can use that brush just to get little impressions of petals at this early stage. It becomes very liquid, very fluid, and I think exciting. It changes pastel much more into a fluid, painterly medium. And remember, it's a fairly wet brush that I'm using at the moment because, if anything, I, 
I'm looking for it to slightly dilute the colour on this side Whereas here, where it's got thicker pastel, I can start to use a, what I call the damp brush. The difference being that the damp brush more or less solidifies the colour and makes it more intense. And the wet brush dilutes the colour. And you see how with the movement of the flat brush you can actually get some lovely quick impressions of flowers. Now before moving into another colour, I'll just clean up the brush a little and go into some of these little pinks that are coming in later. These carnations will just be on the out skirts. That's melting into that and of course this one is a dark flower and the basic colour of that, I don't mind that being fairly intense. It's a little bit square looking but that gives me the beginnings. That's a nice exciting start to the pinks. Let's do the same with the yellows now. I'll just put a little bit more green into the whole composition before I wet that area because I always think it's the greens in a flower composition that pull the whole thing together. And if you can get a pattern of them weaving and linking shapes then that becomes very effective. There's going to be dark greens in here. In fact, why not just go for it now and put a lovely bit of dark green in there because we'll see the benefit of that when we add the water. Okay, let's try some water on that now. You can see how much this actually creates a, a colour. You know, a fairly dark tone there. And I'm just using that to, that's what you've got to watch out for, just catch the drips. And if the brush is too wet, then just take the excess out with a tissue. With any watercolour technique, I've always got a tissue at the ready, ready to catch a few drips or, or even blot out colour on the actual picture. There's a few little stems just showing through. We'll give it a little bit of uh, structure. And then these paler ones at the top. Again, I don't want this running through the picture, so I'm just going to take a fairly dry brush. Quite a lot of lilies there that are not opening yet, so We'll just have them in the background, no feature. And that's enough really just to start working into. Once that dries, I'll start in with some dry pastel. Right, I'm ready now to start working into it. It's just at that itchy finger stage where you're dying to get into it. And I'm going to start with this main flower because that is also where the darkest darks are and the most drama. So. Like I've said before, you want to get the drama in fairly early on. And you see now in this area, it's the equivalent of working on a much darker paper, which suits me very well. Because the pale, pale papers can be a little bit daunting, a little bit frightening when you're wanting some really strong tones. Now I'm using a little bit of dark indigo, very dark indigo there, just to underpaint because, again, rather than wasting time looking for the identical shade, I'm actually putting this red on top of the indigo to get a darker red. So I'm colour mixing straight onto the, the paper. A lot of the shaping of this flower can be done with the colours around it, so I'm just really putting in all the, the basic shapes for now and some of these soft greens that are going into the centre. 
and a very, very dark centre. So we'll bring some of that dark indigo back in there again. That's starting to give a little hint of the shape to come. And then I'll move out slightly to the green surrounding because I can start to shape up some of the petals that way. A little bit of light at the back there and then we'll bring in some more green. Again when you're working from a real subject it's very tempting to start getting into too much detail and my particular system I like to build the whole picture together so I don't like to linger too long on one area. So at the moment I've built up the sort of tonal depth that the flower is going to be and I'm going to leave that for now. It's not necessarily finished, but it does give me an idea of how it's going to look and I can move on, get on with other things.